worse, and she coughs sometimes so hard she throws up more than spitting up, but everything. Okay. But not every time she eats. Um, and she's just coughing hard, and we, today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So, uh, okay, we need to... And welcome back. Our final segment with Ilana Freeland as we talk about her work under an eye and eye sky. Do you think those powers that be, Ilana, when they hear programs like this, when they hear you, they go nuts or do they even care? I, I don't think uh, I'm any threat whatsoever. Um, I think in the, the paranoid 90s, uh, when HARP was really very volatile and the whole program was super uh, national security, uh, there, there was some danger. But now um, I think it's a done deal. The space fence is up and running and they're just putting the final touches on it. And I think that, like I told you earlier, George, I think that they, um, they're happy that I'm a lay person uh, with just a master's degree. Sure. Uh, who's telling the people what's going on. Yeah. No, you're right about that. Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Linda in Ontario, Canada. Hi, Linda. Go ahead. Oh, hi, George. I agree with that first caller. Thank you for all the wonderful things that you have done and are doing. Oh, you're welcome. And um, I am so impressed with your guest tonight. I just heard of her the first time tonight, and she's brilliant. She's right on. Thank you so much. There's two things I wanted to ask. One is um, my computer does bite back at me, and I have to leave it. And um, I'd like you to tell um, what we should do to stop that. And also, why is, it, why is it important for us to sleep with our heads to the north? Oh, you heard I'll me say that on another show? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, north uh, is a very good idea, and that's a very old idea. It's not... Not new with me. Sounds like Reiki, huh? Well, it's it's magnetic north. It's it's about the magnetic uh, field, and that way um, you're you're empowering your your sleep. Uh, and um, as far as the computer goes, I'm not sure what your computer is doing, but of course it's radiating. And so, mm -hmm. uh, not to keep a laptop on your lap, I surround my computer with crystals and Reich, uh, Wilhelm Reich technology uh, that I, um, I now and then will uh, put on the earth in order to recharge it with ether, ether uh, which is all, you know, the great life force. Uh, because I'm on the computer all the time as a writer. So uh, it's, a, it's a very big deal uh, to really uh, turn your router off at night when you're sleeping. You don't need the router on. You'll still get your messages. Put your cell phone, if you insist on having one, put it away from your body while you're sleeping. Uh, and, um, you know, sleep uh, on uh, hopefully a bed that is not with metal in it. Uh, uh, all of these things will be status quo in another 25 years if we're going at the pace we're going now. Ilana, over a 53-year period, we conducted 2,400 open-air nuke tests. It's got to have an effect on things. Oh, my gosh, yes. Absolutely. And the Fukushima. I mean, that, that's part of the mix, you know, and that's part of the experimentation is the uh, to see who can handle it, whose immune system can't handle it, to see if the new generations can handle this level of ionized and non-ionized radiation. Yeah. All right, back to the calls. Joe in Monterey, California now. Hi, Joseph. Go ahead. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, George, uh, this is probably the, the show that I've been waiting for. This I've been is calling it. up every night and asking that one question that I get to ask. Everything she says is so spot on. It's incredible. I've been doing... Uh, I've been going to New Life Expo for, uh, you know, and since 92. When the book came out, it was like wildfire. Yeah. In 95, everybody loved the book, and uh, it was a big buzz. We're not paranoid. We're well-informed. Yeah. Um, there's something else that they do that I... Uh, oh, uh, to get to, to you, George, I got something to tell you as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that people are finding is that... Uh, 
the the soaking and stuff that's very good and some people use duct tape to pull it off mm. uh, a couple of years ago yeah they could pull them out um, a couple of years ago I was putting uh, magnets on my wrist mm -hmm. figuring that well it's in the blood it goes around maybe I could knock them out with strong magnetic pull you know magnets right um, another thing uh, this is the question and you answered it but there's something about this question um, and this is for you too, George. Um, an EM pulse. Does this knock them out? That's number one. The next question is, when a meteor hits the Earth, and it goes through the atmosphere, I think it, it uh, collects a pretty heavy charge, and when it hits the ground, does this create a, me uh, a mega pulse? Does this could create a big EM pulse? Because well, George once said that his biggest fear was a meteor hit. Ah, I see. Um, well, let me answer the the first one. The uh, to EMP uh, the nanobots in our bodies. Yes, some people are uh, experimenting with that. Uh, and Tony Pantaloresco, I said his name. Uh, he is experimenting with that uh, to uh, to just basically uh, fry them and catapult them out. The problem is then um, that the entire body is involved in that, and it's it's pretty pretty uh, extreme. So uh, r you remember the name Royal Rife? The Rife machine was able to uh, knock out cancer cells, kill them dead, because Rife had the frequencies of the cancer. And uh, if, I, if, if we use electromagnetics to knock these nanobots out, then I say that we need their frequency uh, so that we don't damage the rest of the body. Um, regarding the meteor, uh, I, I tend to not believe when they say it's a meteor because they're doing lots of plasma experiments in the atmosphere. So. Um, I'm not as uh, uh, up on meteors because they lie so much. NASA lies all the time. So I don't know uh, what's what and who's who in a way, and so I can't comment intelligently on that question. But I think really the only disruption would be if one blew up in the atmosphere, uh, then it could create some kind of electromagnetic pulse effect. Good. But the, yeah. most of the, the meteors that have hit us of recent have been pretty small. I mean, the the biggest was the explosion over Russia, uh, where 14 people got injured by the concussion sound. Right. Uh, remember that one a few years ago? Yeah, and, and um, yeah, and that's that's what I mean. Is now I'm confused because every time you turn around and there's a plasma event in the atmosphere that the public is not informed of, they say it's a meteor. Right. Uh, so I I don't know a real meteor from a non-real meteor. Who would know? Yeah, exactly. First time caller Diego in Tucson, Arizona. Hi, Diego. Thanks for calling. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hi, um, George and Ilana. Yeah, this is my first time. Thanks again for taking my call. Um, so, as I'm sure you know, we have a pretty major Air Force base here in Tucson called Davis Mountain. Uh, yep. And um, I was wondering, do you know of any, and like this is my first time hearing of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the disease. It's like Melord. I'm um, more gallons. Yeah, more gallons. Sorry. That's all right. Do you know of? Do either of you know of any like documented cases here in Tucson and like the level of chemtrails here? Because I've talked to you know friends and people I know about chemtrails and stuff like that. But do you know if like it's particularly high here or? Where can people track Ilana specific cities with? issues like Morgellons. Oh, this is, this is something that I have wanted for so long, is to be able to track this data, but there's so much shame around it, and there are so many people going to doctors who are then, then have the, 
the uh, stigma of having a psychiatric evaluation of delusional parasitosis. Yeah, and be no, one, no one's really tracking the cities. We just don't have a database, and it's just it, it, I'm ashamed of uh, of us. But um, but everyone is dancing as fast as they can to understand what to do to alleviate the pain and suffering of the people who have the lesions. Um, as far as Tucson goes, I was just in Tucson giving a talk um, maybe a month ago, and I was there in May. And um, the dryness of the desert seems to me uh, that it would not be a very high rate, whereas when you go to Florida or Texas, which and and southern california um perhaps in the central valley area where uh <clears throat> the uh morgellons seems to be higher where there's more moisture and that's simply what i've noticed uh no one has uh, has collated any data on that let's go east of the rockies with melissa in south carolina hi melissa go ahead hello i can answer that question that that the question you have alana thank you all for doing this uh, it started appearing around uh, bodies of salt water all these coastlines and that was back in 2005 there's an excellent physician in san francisco who was getting a lot of infectious disease and he was getting a lot of patients uh, with these norvellian symptoms and i want to clarify something there's so much misinformation and disinformation makes it very confusing and people yeah. get false information which sure. makes it much harder but anyway he started having all of these patients appearing because so he did a medical study and put it in one of the journals i think in journal of infectious disease but i'm not sure i'm reluctant to give his name but he was appearing in newspaper articles around the country back at that time and he discovered that 79 out of 80 of his patients with uh western blot testing panels you have to do the panels because the western blots always come back negative even if you have lyme disease but it's, uh, he found that all of the 80 patients except one had Lyme disease. He knows how to run these tests. There's a group that has formed called International Lyme and Associated Diseases, and these are the Lyme literate doctors. They've been studying it. They use the research of microbiologists. Yep. And so it is Morgellon, oh, I hate that name, but it's considered a co-infection just yeah. like Bartonella or Babesia or Ehrlichosis, ticks bring in multiple diseases. And that's when Morgellon started appearing, before the chemtrails were a big deal. Yeah. It was being brought into the bloodstream by ticks in addition with the Lyme disease. And so that's why his study is so important, because it shows that connection. And if you think about the microbiology connection and the gene splicing and all, it appears to me that it probably has been inserted in the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria as a vehicle. Yes, the bacteria was used, absolutely. Um, did you say his name and I missed it or no? No, she did not. Okay. I, 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 he probably won't be mad at me if he's still in practice, but these good doctors were getting sued. This was back in the... Um, Where were they based? Uh, Dr. I'm going to say his name, Dr. Raphael Stricker, who's actually developed the blood test and the urine test that show the presence of the bacteria. The FDA will not approve it. There are labs in Florida. Interesting. Well, where was he? Uh, oh, Florida, they're based, huh? He, no, he was in San Francisco. Okay. Um, and, but the doctor that I found in South Carolina, I live in South Carolina. I was treated like Sue. Tell Sue, let Sue know that every person who goes to doctors who are not Lyme literate gets ridiculed and, and all of that and gets put on drugs. Bo Boston Hospital is treating Morgellons now, too. So there are some places, Ilana, mm -hmm. that seem to be accepting this and trying to fight it. Slowly. I mean, it's uh, it's along with the geoengineering being announced as soon as Trump came into office that we are moving on, but it's uh, it's a glacial pace, yeah. Well, they got to get it done, and they've got to get it done fast. So, what are you working on next? Oh yes, that caller was very uh, informative. Thank sure you was. so much. Um, I am now writing the third and hopefully last book in the series because I have to write a book on synthetic biology. So I wrote down the name of that doctor that she said, um, this, this book will go uh, into as many aspects of the transhumanist trend uh, as, I can, as I can muster. Uh, and then my hope is after I finish this and have written three books, 
that then uh, scientists who have much more knowledge than I and uh, will gather their courage uh, and uh, and face the possibility of uh, the loss of their career or uh, even uh, their own endangerment and come forward to write more so that the people do not suffer so much. You seem to come up with a new book every four years. So would this one come out in 2022 or before I hope that? It's sooner than that, George. Please, please. No, I, I, I hope to finish it within two years. Okay, Graham, we'll get you back. All right. Thanks a lot for being on the program. Really appreciate it. International corporations are modifying our weather all the time, and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. 